Lesson 5.2, Find Unknown Numbers. We're going to talk about multiplication and variables. We can use an array or multiplication table to help us find an unknown factor or a product. An equation is a number sentence that uses an equal sign to show that two amounts are equal. Both sides of the equal sign will have the same value. We have 5 times 4, which is equal to 20. We have 20 on both sides of the equal sign. We can also have two facts that are equal to each other. We have 5 times 4, which is equal to 20 on the left side, and 2 times 10, which is equal to 20 on the right side. Both sides of the equal sign are equal to 20. An unknown factor can be shown as a symbol, like a star or a box, or as a letter of the alphabet. A letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown amount is called a variable, and its value varies for each equation, and it makes the equation true. So in one equation, it could be the letter of the alphabet could equal an, an amount, and in a very next equation, that same variable could equal a different amount. It depends on the equation. Here we have 2 times a box is equal to 6. We can also say 2 times n is equal to 6 and put an n in the place of the empty box. We know that 2 times 3 is 6, so n is equal to 3. Here we have a box times 3 is equal to 15. We know 5 times 3 is equal to 15, so the box must be equal to 5. We can say n times 3 is equal to 15. That means the n is equal to 5. In this equation, the n was equal to 3, and in this equation, the n was equal to 5. Its value varies for each equation, and it's important that it makes the equation true. Lisa plans to invite 24 people to her birthday party. The invitations come in packs of eight. How many packs of invitations does Lisa need to buy? We can write an equation with a variable to help us solve the problem. We can say n times eight, because that's how many are in each pack, is equal to 24. That would be the number of people. And the N will stand for the number of equal groups. It'll stand for the number of packs. We can make it an array with 24 tiles with 8 tiles in each row. We have N for the number of packs times 8, that's how many are invitations are in each pack, is equal to 24. That's the product. We make rows of 8 until we have 24. We see that we made 3 rows. We need 3 rows of 8 to equal 24, so n is equal to 3. It makes the equation true. 3 times 8 is equal to 24. We have 24 on this side and 24 on this side of the equation. So Lisa needs 3 packs of invitations. Now, if you don't understand arrays, you can look at this video's description for a link to video 3.5 where we first learned about arrays. We can use a multiplication table to solve an equation. We're going to have a variable p that'll stand for the product. So we've got 6 times 8 is equal to p. We need to find what p is equal to. We find where the row for 6, right here, meets the column for 8. And they meet at the 48. So 6 times 8 is equal to 48. That means P is equal to 48. Let's take a closer look. We see where the row for 6 meets the row for 8, and it meets at the square that has a 48 in it. So 6 times 8 is equal to 48. And there'll be a link to video 4.7 to understand a multiplication table. 
It's where we first learned about them. So now we know our variable p is equal to 48. We can use a multiplication table to find an unknown factor, w. 6 times w is equal to 24. We need to find the value of the w that is taking the place of the unknown factor. We look across the row, because this is the rows, we look across the row for 6 until we see the 24. Then we go up the column to see which column it's in. It's in the column for 4. So we know w is equal to 4. So, as a reminder of what we learned in the beginning of chapter 3, we have 5 times 2 is equal to 10. This 5 is the number of equal groups. It's also a factor of 10, and it tells us how many equal rows there are. The 2 is the number of objects in each group. It's what we skip count by. It's also a factor of 10, the product. This is the columns, and it's how many objects are in each row. So this is the rows, this is the columns. This is the equal groups, this is how many objects are in each equal group. And of course, 10 is the product. And we learned in chapter four that 10 is also a multiple of five, and it's a multiple of two. An equation can be written with the product on the left side of the equal sign, like here. Here we have a variable d, and it says d is equal to 9 times 3. So our product is on the left side. Some equations are like that. We look at the row for 9, and we look at the column for 3, and we see they meet at 27. So d is equal to 27. That's our product. We can use a multiplication table to find equations that are equal to each other. Both sides of the equal sign will have the same value. Here we have 5 times a is equal to 2 times 10. We find 2 times 10, which is equal to 20, so we know this side must be equal to 20. We look and go across the row for 5 to the 20. We go up and we see that it's in the column for 4. So a must be equal to 4. Now, we can also use 4 times 5 is equal to 20 because the commutative property of multiplication says that we can multiply in any order and get the same product. So we can go down 5, find 20, and then go across and see that it's a 4. a is still equal to 4. And that 4 will make this equation true. We solve one side first to solve the other side. We have 5 times a is equal to 18 minus 3. We do 18 minus 3, which is equal to 15. So we know this side must be equal to 15. 5 times 3 is equal to 15. So a must be equal to 3. 9 times n is equal to 41 plus 4. We do 41 plus 4 and find the sum. That's 45. So this side must be equal to 45. We go across 9 to 45. We go up and see it's in the column for 5. So we know n is equal to 5. 4 times 4 is equal to 2 times a. We need to find out what a is. 4 times 4 is equal to 16, so we know this side must be equal to 16. We go across the 2 row to the 16. We go up and see it's an 8, so we know a is equal to 8, and that'll make the equation true. y times 8 is equal to to 2 times 6 plus 6. We solve this side first. 6 plus 6 is equal to 12. So 2 times 12 
Well, that's equal to 24. This side must be equal to 24. So we need to know the value of y, what it's equal to, to make this equal to 24. We can go to the 8 and go down to the 24 and go across and see that it's at 3 for the row. So y is equal to 3. So we can find the product in the multiplication table by following a column or a row to see what the other number is that makes that product. Invitations cost $6 for a pack of eight. Lisa gives the cashier $20 and gets $2 in change. How many packs of invitations did Lisa buy? Well, for this problem, we need to work backwards. We need to first find what 20 minus $2 is to know how much she paid. 20 minus 2 is equal to 18, so she paid $18 at $6 a pack. $6, the cost of each pack, times n, that's the number of packs, is equal to $18, how much she paid. We can go for, to the row for 6 and go to 18, then follow it up the column to see that it's a 3. So we know n is equal to 3, and that means Lisa bought 3 packs of invitations. So for something like this, a problem like this, you're going to want to work backwards and start at the bottom and do 20 minus 2 to find out how much she paid. Then you can figure out what the variable stands for to solve the problem. So keep in mind that you can use an array or a multiplication table to help us find an unknown factor or product. and you might see a symbol like a star or a triangle or a box for an unknown factor or product. You might see a letter of the alphabet that takes the place of an unknown amount. And they're called variables because they vary for their value from each equation to each equation. I have an image of the multiplication table and a blank multiplication table on my Facebook page just go to the image section and you'll be able to print one out to fill it out yourself or to use to help you with your homework. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you're doing well and I'll see you next time. Bye.